core of his two passions, cycling and photography. Hens, shutters, and spokes. Love that business title, okay? The floor is yours. I'd like to introduce my title of this talk is Follow Your Passions. Well, thank you very much. And thank you all for coming out. And welcome to Shutter Spokes with Corporators, where we can fix your bike and at the same time documented on <laughs> For a couple of years, when I had to fill out a form where it said occupation, I wrote in retired. It didn't feel quite right at my age. And so what I did was I started a business, and I, I went back to my passions, cycling and photography, and I combined those in the name of my, my company. And so now, rather than retire, I write in bike mechanic and photographer. And as someone from CTC likes to say, I am rewired not retired. <laughs> and so it doesn't feel like a job to me because I'm doing my passions. Someone comes to me with a bike that's in disrepair. I can get it back on the road safely for them, or if they no longer want it, I can get it to somewhere, possibly in Africa. goals starting out. I wanted to keep myself busy in my rewirement, but I still needed to keep enough time available for myself, for my wife, for the dogs, for the house. And it seems there's never quite enough. I also wanted to make some money. Some more money. I wanted to fit in the community. I wanted to feel, fulfill sort of the need that everyone has to belong, both locally and globally. And so I've done that through helping out with various charity events, the big bike ride, the Ride from cancer and various other charities where I've offered raffle prizes and things. Now, this passion of mine with biking goes back to when I was about oh, six or seven years old and I got on my older brother's bicycle for the first time and they ran beside me and then all of a sudden it was, I'm riding. I didn't know how to turn, I didn't know how to stop, but I was right. And for me, it meant freedom. I could go places that I couldn't go otherwise. I could get out of earshot of my mom. And she called and was, well, you know, I'm not there. And I can count on my, my brothers as well for interesting me in both cycling and photography. My oldest brother was right into the cycling, and I've got twin brothers, and they were both great right in photography. And at about the same time, my parents bought us a set of dark blue. So as a teenager, I was on the high school yearbook as one of three photographers. But I was the only one that actually had a dark room. So I had a lot of experience in photography in my teen years. My other interests were plants and the environment. And I went off to university, and as you heard, I got three degrees and was working on a fourth one, which I never got finished because I got married, started raising a family, and eventually the family said, Ken, 
it's time to get out of school and get a job. And the prospects in the field of environmental research at that point were very good. Because the businesses and research institutions were doing proactive hiring. And the worst thing you could be was a healthy white male. And so I went to teach. There happened to be some openings there. And so I did a full career as a teacher. And so for many years, my photography and my biking were sidelined. But every couple of years, my back went out. And I had to go see a chiropractor, and she said, Ken, you need to get in shape. And better, years later, oh, went out again. I went back to chiropractor. She said, Ken, get in shape. And eventually, after about the fourth or fifth time I was going out, I took her advice and I started swimming. Laps, back, forth, back, forth. That's boring. So I got my bike in. And well, if you're going to do that, you may have let a third one. I started running and I became a triathlete. And I did that for about 10 years. And so I was hooked back into biking. Seven and a half years ago, I got married to my wife, Heather. And that's when I got seriously back into photography. First to record our, our honeymoon and then various other trips. One we took four years ago. Five years ago now, two passions of cycling photography collided. On a trip to France, we followed the final week of the Tour de France and all the various stops. And I took hundreds and hundreds of photographs, and this is just one of them. Um, and I was hooked again. So three years ago, I retired. I spent some more time with, with friends and family. But then I realized I still needed to keep myself busy. And the goal of staying connected meant that my marketing strategy and it ended up being my being connected ended up being my marketing strategy. So I created a web presence. So I've got a Flutter's books presence on Facebook and I have a website. <laughs> I've created a neighborhood presence. So I took flyers and I passed them out in all the houses on the streets. And I have a little A-frame that advertises my business with that on the front lawn. And those each attract your business. And then I needed to have sort of the broader community and global presence. <coughs> and I did that through helping out with various charities. I fight from cancer. things because they gave me lots of connections in lots of different areas. And I could talk with people and they could give me all kinds of different advice <coughs> as to whether it was for writing, photography, whether it was about marketing, whether it was about computers, whether it was about something else. It also provided me a Donated and also provided me with some clients. And I realized when I first started that I needed to get some more skills. And the first thing I did was I took a bike mechanics course at the local bike shop. And fortunately, I was the only one registered in that course. So for six weeks, every Friday, Hours, I got to work on my own bike. And I lost. And at the end of the 
six weeks, I was still interested in learning more. And he said, well, if you want to learn more, come to the shop on a Friday night and help gather mechanics put together bikes. And I did that. And after a couple of months, they actually started paying me to do that. <laughs> and I've worked on and off uh, with that bike shop for a couple of years now. But when I started my business, I also realized I needed even more training. So I went to Centennial College. It was a course, it was a professional bike mechanics course that lasted eight days for 88 hours. Or actually 11 days for 88 hours. Day. On top of that, there were three hours of homework. So it was a very long day. But now when I talk to a client and they bring me a bike, I can talk very confidently about it, about what I can and what I can't do. How much it will cost. When I talk to them with the background that I've got, and the passion that I've got, they can feel confident in what I can do for them. And so, in summary, I never thought that I'd ever be an entrepreneur. I've been an entrepreneur now two years of my life. I'm now in my so if I can start it this late in life, anybody else can as well. Pick something you've got a passion for. Because it won't feel quite work. Look for opportunities to become trained. Whether it's taking a course, whether it's volunteering your time, or whether it's sitting down with somebody and listening to their experience. <coughs> Get your name out there. Join CTC. Join other community clubs. Help out with events. <coughs> Provide raffle prizes. All different ways of getting known. Take advantage of other people to help you with what you don't know. And leave the tour. Yeah. <laughs>